Where in scripture does it state God decreed everything? You cannot find it. But White consistently and repeatedly retreats to this alleged invalid distinction between all of their ancient religions and modern Calvinist Christianity. As you said, he completely ignores Augustine's introduction of deterministic concepts into Christianity from his prior decades of involvement in not one, but all three, one, two, three, of the most highly deterministic groups in the ancient world, Stoicism, Manichaeism, and Neoplatonism. So according to White, Augustine spends decades studying, participating in these three highly deterministic groups, yet they did not affect Augustine's view of determinism. After teaching free will without determinism for 15 years, one day Augustine simply picks up his Bible and voila, Paul was teaching determinism, just like the Manichaeans had said all along. Hmm. All prior Christians had missed it and had refuted that determinism. That takes a lot of faith in one fallible man steeped in determinism for decades, but somehow not affected at all. Unbelievable, <laughs> is, literally unbelievable. It's like one uh, person tweeted that um, it, it, he thinks it's, it's kind of crazy to call us Pelagians uh, when we haven't even read Pelagius yet somehow call it absurd to even insinuate that that uh, Augustine might be influenced by Manichaeanism when he was an actual Manichaean for 10 years of his life. It's, it's not a huge stretch. Uh, and again, it, it just seems to me that, that White keeps holding on to this, that if I can show that uh, Augustine didn't import every aspect of Manichaeanism and all its weirdness, then I have, I have demonstrated conclusively that he has not been influenced at all or that he hasn't brought any aspect of Manichaeanism, um, namely um, theistic determinism, into the Christian church. Um, here's, a, here's another one on his, White's distinction between what he calls, well, Reformed theology is deterministic. He does admit that at least. Um, but it, it's not, but, but, but it's personally deterministic, he says. L listen to what he says. Determinism is a term that's thrown around a great deal in regards to the sovereignty of God and the existence of his divine decree. And so Reformed theology is deterministic, but it is personally deterministic. And that person is the person of God. All right, so Dr. Wilson, uh, speak to White's repeated defense of deterministic versus, quote-unquote, personally deterministic. Sure. Uh, before Augustine became a bishop, his very first book was On Providence. This espoused a meticulous, micromanaging God. Numerous scholars described the significant influence of Stoicism on Augustine through Cicero, he actually pronounced it right. It's everybody says Cicero, but in Latin it's not Cicero. Probably, I would probably uh, say Cicero. <laughs> well, everybody does. Um, through Cicero and Chrysippus, that's where Augustine really picked up his, his Stoicism. Young, who translated Cicero's Cicero's on fate, said, Cicero regards fate or destiny as the decree of God, the inevitable dictum of providence. Let me read it again. Cicero regards fate or destiny as the decree of God, the inevitable dictum of providence. So Augustine echoed this in the City of God 5.1. If, let me read it, if anyone ascribes them to fate because he uses the term fate to mean the will and power of God, let him hold to his meaning, but correct his terminology, end of quote. So to Augustine, deterministic versus personally deterministic meant replacing fate with the Christian God decree. Of course there are differences, but meticulous micromanaging of stoic fate had now become the all-encompassing decrees of the Christian God. So, and we've talked about this before in other episodes, where a naturalistic determinist says that all things are coming to back to pass through determinism, 
of nature, you know, just events, prior yeah. events that, that cause these different things. Um, whereas obviously theistic determinists are saying it all comes to pass, not just through big bang, you know, natural processes, but through a, a creator, um, one who sovereignly yeah. decrees all things that come to pass. Um, and, and then that brings the question of do some of the same issues that arise for the naturalistic determinist, um, like how do you hold people morally responsible for their choices and those kinds of things, can they be yeah. applied to theistic determinists? And, and I think that there can be some overlap there. In fact, uh, in our broadcast, uh, replying to uh, Bing Yong's book on the subject, we get into that. Uh, Dr. Hunter and, and Dr. Stratton and I all uh, discuss how those things are, if you're interested in going deeper into that. But let's uh, look at this next section here, where again, he, he talks about Manichaean's uh, determinism versus Calvinistic determinism. When you hear that we are determinists, what does that mean? And if you're if you're a Calvinist, you tend to just go, well, yeah, God God decrees. I mean, Ephesians one eleven. That's what it says. Um, it that's worked out in Acts two, Acts four, Isaiah ten, Genesis fifty, all over the place. Um, this is biblical teaching. Yeah, okay. But what I've been forced to do is to expand my understanding of the categories of what determinism means, because. For example, they, the provisionists, argue uh, that the Manichaeans were determinists, and that's where Augustine got it, and then, then that's where Calvin got it, and that's why you and me. The Bible has nothing to do with well, what, what we believe. See, you need to understand that. We've, we, just, we just said, as long as Augustine says it, I believe it. Most, of, most Calvinists I know of have read a few paragraphs of Augustine, may have read the Confessions, um, haven't, read, and he, they, they haven't read anything he wrote against Julian or the Manichaean movement. Or I have no, no idea. But that's what we're being told now. Is it's just a straight line, unmodified, boom, 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 which, of course, is absurd on its face. But anyway... That's what we're being told about this stuff. Now, you may not have been aware of it, Dr. Wilson, um, but there are different types of determinism, in case you didn't know. <laughs> Thank you, Layden, yeah, for informing welcome. me. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, I've extensively studied secular philosophy on causation, free will, and all types of determinism. Um, I'm, the current book I'm writing will have a whole section on secular philosophy on those issues. Happy to debate that with White if he wants. Uh, yes, there are major differences. Augustine knew them. Uh, but the key is, again, understanding Augustine's syncretism, incorporating those deterministic concepts into Christianity, deterministic concepts that were never there previously in Christianity. Um, Augustine baptized Stoic thought into Christianity. For example, uh, read uh, Augustine. Ancient Thought Baptized by John Rist from Cambridge Press. Uh, or you can read Sarah Bias chapter, uh, Augustine's Debt to Stoicism in the Confessions. Uh, that's in the Rudledge Handbook of the Stoic Tradition, 2015. Um, White errs by appealing to only differences while ignoring key connecting concepts. Uh, he seems to argue Christianity in general was influenced somewhat by pagan thought but Calvinism, his Calvinism is exempted, excused from being influenced by pagan thought. That is the fallacy of special pleading. And, and I think also what people have got to consider is if Calvinism is wrong, I mean, you've kind of got to step into that world to be objective. Okay, if Calvinism is wrong, then how was it improperly introduced within the church? That's, if you ask yourself those questions— yeah. And so let's just just pretend that Calvinism for sure, like, let's just say God appears to us right now and just says, uh, Calvinism is incorrect theology. We just all know it. OK, so we just absolutely yeah. sure it is absolutely false. So then we would look back and go, OK, where did we make our error? Where, where did this shift take place? Where did it happen? And this yeah. is where your thesis really steps in to show this is where it happened. This is where it was first introduced. This is the first record of it, even by Reformed historians' own uh, studies and estimations. 
Um, and so th that's the yeah. importance of this is to, sh to demonstrate if, if Calvinism is false, this is most likely how um, it was introduced into the church and where the, the, the line kind of diverges into this more deterministic way of, of, of seeing things. So let's look at this next section of, of clips from Dr. White. Like a minority of Christians any longer have a theology that's robust enough to go, and you know what? God's in control of it. He's in control of it. I can't tell you how many people I've seen that go, God doesn't have anything to do with this virus, and he didn't have anything to do with bringing it about, and he's not... And you're just like, what Bible have you been reading? Uh, it's not not the one one I've been reading. There's lots of plagues in the Old Testament, and God wasn't caught by surprise by any of them. In fact, they all seem to be completely under his control. Completely. So what, what, what Bible are you reading? Well, you're reading the same Bible, but you've adopted a secular lens through which to filter out anything that is offensive to that secular worldview. That's unfortunately what we see all over the place. All right. So the reason I played that clip is, is he wasn't addressing us specifically here, um, which is sometimes when you can find the, the inconsistencies or the double standards. Uh, could, could White's argument apply to Calvinist as well? Could, could Calvinist be reading the text from a Manichaean worldview without knowing anything about Manichaeanism? Exactly. Um, I think Calvinists have adopted a Stoic and Manichaean deterministic interpretation of Scripture of God as micromanaging. Uh, this deterministic interpretation was not present in Christianity prior to Augustine. Determinism was Stoic, Gnostic, Manichaean, and Neoplatonic. So Augustine brings it into Christianity. So Calvin's interpretations were dependent upon Augustine's underlying assume determinism in scripture. Well, explain that, unpack that a little bit further, because I can, I can hear White in my head. <laughs> I've been listening to him quite a bit, as you can imagine. Um, I can hear him pushing back on that and saying, okay, there's a direct, you, so you just think he's downloaded it as, you know, like a computer chip into his brain or, so how is that, how has Calvin been influenced? Explain that. Yeah, good, good, good question. So Calvin's exegesis of the text, when he comes to the text, it assumes an underlying determinism. And same thing is done by the modern Calvinists. They assume an underlying determinism as they do the exegesis. So when you start with a paradigm of determinism as your foundation, your exegesis will always follow it. Uh, you do not need to know anything, nothing, zero, about Manichaean determinism to imbibe it. Why? Because you've read Calvin, who read Augustine, who spent decades as a determinist in Stoicism, Manichaeism, and Neoplatonism. Yeah, so, and, and you might not even, even read Calvin. You may read John MacArthur, for example. Yeah. Or John, you may read yeah. John Piper. Um, and, and so there's the influence. And plus, you have to ask yourself the question, um, if, if there was no determinism at all within any of the teachings, no, no Calvinistic theology, and James White, for the very first time, picks up his Bible, and he's, he's the first one to read Romans 9 and Ephesians 1 in that deterministic way. Um, and, and he interprets all of a sudden that um, people are born morally incapable for the very first time. He's the one who comes up with that tulip concept. Nobody would take him seriously. Everything, everybody would just assume that he has no grounds on which to stand. And that this is what we're trying to point out, is that we're not trying to say that just because you happen to believe deterministically, Calvinistically, therefore you you listen to Manny or Monty or Manichaeanism, theology. We're not trying to say that. We're, we're trying to say it's influenced the church as a whole, and therefore just the, 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 the kind of the precursor of deterministic thought can be in your mind. And therefore, when you're reading the text with those things, those lenses on, like we talked about before, then all of a sudden you read a text differently than the way you would have read it otherwise. And so it seems to me that the main point that White repeatedly emphasizes is that the Christian God who decreed everything is different from the, the deterministic Stoics, Gnostics, Manichaeans, who all held to different views of determinism. So you really just can't, yeah. can't compare it. You shouldn't compare it. You're stupid to compare it. You're, 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 you, sh you're, you have, you have, a, you're all, I mean, all kinds of just uh, uh, hyperbolic statements about anybody who even tries to compare the determinism of, of Manichaeans 
to the determinism of, of Calvinists. But what else can you say about that claim? <laughs> um, so I would ask, where in Scripture does it state God decreed everything? You cannot find it. God does decree some things, but not everything. Scripture states God controls the stars and every speck in the universe. But where does it say God, will, God micromanages every world event by prior decree? Calvinists assume God decrees everything. Why? Because Augustine brought micromanaging stoic providence into Christianity. And he used Manichaean interpretation of scripture verses to prove determinism theologically in Ephesians 1 and 2. According to scholars who I quote in the thesis, the only Jews who ever taught meticulous providence were the Qumranites and Philo. Both were heavily influenced by Stoicism according to those scholars. So our Old Testament, their Tanakh, did not teach meticulous determinism according to almost all Jews. In the New Testament, no scholar I have read views Paul as teaching determinism except Calvinist. No, not one non-Calvinist scholar I know has written that an early church father held Augustine's deterministic view of God and unilaterally assigning eternal destinies. So where did Augustine's meticulous providence originate? Was it divine revelation? I doubt it. Uh, true scholars point to deterministic Stoicism, Gnosticism, Manichaeism, and Neoplatonism, exactly as I stated. So Augustine tweaked Manichaean anthropology of damnation by created birth, created birth, into damnation by inherited guilt from Adam at birth, by fallen nature of Adam, not created nature by the <laughs> bad God. So his peers did not consider that difference between fallen nature and created nature significant. Uh, it was Christianized Manichaean anthropology, damned at birth by fallen nature, not created nature, but still damned at birth. They did not see this as a Christian doctrine. It was a Manichaean doctrine that had been baptized. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, you mentioned the scriptures, and th this is something we we try to go over quite regularly in our program. Uh, and this is when we have guests on who are Calvinists, we ask that question: Where where does the Bible teach that God decreed everything, including besetting sins and uh, you know sinful thoughts and pride? I mean, First John two sixteen says the the lust of the flesh and the pride of life are not from the Father, but from the world. And yet, your doctrine says they're from God's sovereign decree, ultimately. Um, and, and I haven't heard at least a satisfying answer from Calvinist on that point. In fact, you've got Jeremiah 19, 5 that says when they're burning their children to Melech, not only it says, I did not command it, but in the ESV, it says, nor did I decree it, nor did it enter my mind. And yet Calvinists say God decrees everything, yet the scriptures say he didn't decree at least that. Um, and so, and there are many other verses, uh, James obviously yeah, saying he doesn't tempt right. men to evil and, and so many other passages that really uh, seek and it seems to me to distance God from the evil of the world. Um, and that's really a defense of his holiness. That's one of the things that we try to emphasize. The reason we're doing this is not just right. to, to like that we're bowing at the altar of man's free will. We, we are trying to, <laughs> we're trying to protect the, the, what the Bible teaches with regard to the holiness and the character and the goodness of God. And that's what's that's right. so vital here. And the yep. number one verse that I hear James White quote to support this concept of God's decree of everything that happens is Ephesians 1.11, which is completely misaligned because that, that's actually in the active uh, tense where he says he's working all things uh, f f according to his will. That's, he's actively working all things together for good. It's just like in Romans 8, 28. He's, he, the fact that God yeah. works all things together for good for those who love him, for those who are in him, as in Ephesians 1, it's talking about those who are in Christ. The fact that God works out good for all the who are in him, that, that's something we all universally hold to. And there's nothing in Ephesians 1, 11 that suggests this dupied or this um, e exhausted divine determinism or God's decree of, of every human thought, action, and deed. Um, with that in mind, let's listen to this next section of clips from Dr. White. 
that is first and foremost about the revelation of God's character and the accomplishment of his self-glorification in the joining of a particular people to himself in and through Jesus Christ. If you can, if you can just sit back and say, oh, see, Manichaean determinism, Calvinist determinism, same thing. No, not even close. Um, that's, can you see that the term grace of a Manichaean deity is different than the grace of the triune God of scripture? You think there there might be just a smidge of a difference between the two? I mean, against Stoics and against Manichaeans and Gnostics, they're saying no. The Christian God is a relational God. He he, in his foreknowledge, knows who's going to respond and who's not. It's not just this arbitrary thing that happens, like the Stoics believe and like the Gnostics believe and like the Manichaeans believe. Now you see how you put them all together. No serious scholar would ever do that. No serious scholar who wants to be honest with what Stoicism believed, what, which group of Gnostics, there are so many different groups of Gnostics with so many different perspectives. All right, so set aside for a second White's ad hominem argument there. And um, he, he says the differences are just so immense. They're absolutely, it's just crazy that any parallel could possibly be drawn. What do you say to that? Um, that's a non sequitur. That means it does not follow logically. Um, let's say, well, somebody could say this. Um, there could be no meaningful parallels between Calvinist and provisionist. Uh, Calvinists assert uh, God foreordained and decreed all rapes, genocides, murders, wars, child sexual abuse. Provisionists do not view God as decreeing evil. In Calvinism, uh, humans are eternally damned to hell at birth from the inherited guilt of Adam. Provisionists deny babies are eternally damned at birth. In Calvinism, God elects only a few people very mysteriously. Uh, provisionists say God equally loves and invites all persons to salvation. For Calvinists, God's sovereignty is paramount. Provisionists say God's love is paramount. Enormous differences in who God is. Very different gods. Therefore, no parallels can be made. Whoa. <laughs> I would respond to that person like this. Uh, wait a minute. Both groups believe Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, who saves us from our sins. That's not a valid parallel. We can find important common elements. Similarly, although they are very different, meaningful parallels can be drawn between Stoicism, Gnosticism, Manichaeism and Neoplatonism and Augustinian Calvinism. Many other scholars have already drawn those parallels with Augustine. For one, you could look up Professor uh, Johannes van Oort uh, on Augustine's incorporation of Manichaeism. White's favorite argument is not valid. It's a non sequitur. Yeah, and, 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 that's, uh, and that, this is what we we're talking about before, is that the reason we don't cast out Calvinist as, you know, uh, unbelievers or as non-Christians is because we do hold some commonality with our belief in Christ. Um, and, and we may refer to different gods in the sense that we're, we're describing different views of God is obviously what we mean by that. Um, but we believe they, they obviously worship the the. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, just like we do, we, we, we believe they have misunderstood some scriptures and therefore are describing God with characteristics that he does not have. And therefore, that's why we're trying to bring correction. Like I said before, uh, not bowing at the altar of free will, but really trying to, to maintain what the Bible teaches with regard to God's holiness and his character and the genuineness of his love and provision and desire for people to be saved. We, we want to uphold that as important. <music>